Paul Severino, Harold Reynolds, back with you on a Monday hot stove. We've been very, very busy, uh, as are uh, writers across the, across the country, including this guy. Bob Nightingale from USA Today joins us right now. Bob, thanks a lot. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, doing great, Paul. Hey, Harold. Hey, Bob. How you doing, buddy? Good. Good, good, good to talk to you. Obviously, the big topic uh, around baseball, at least uh, among free agents, is Robinson Cano. We talk about it a lot. It may happen soon. It may happen uh, in a while. What is it going to take for him to sign somewhere? I talked to one National League general manager, and they're convinced that if somebody offers Cano seven years at $200 million, he's gone. He'll take it. And I don't know why the Yankees won't do that. I mean, that way... Cano would still be getting over $20.5 million, which would make him the highest-paid player, so all the egos, you know, would be in check. And uh, then the Yankees could keep the uh, years down. You know, instead of Cano wanting nine years or ten years, it goes to seven, but he still gets that AAV that he wants. Hey, Bob, i got to ask you, you know, earlier when we were discussing this, I said I felt like the Yankees had this week to kind of get it done before those other clubs, like a GM in the National League you're talking about, really does go to $200 Because you know how it gets at the winter meetings sometimes. They get in those little rooms, and next thing you know, a deal's done. Could, could we possibly see Cano go somewhere else? We could. It's still very unlikely because of the marketing aspect. I mean, he's still not going to get you know, anywhere near the kind of money he's going to make off the field unless it's New York. You know, not that baseball players make the kind of money that uh, NBA players and NFL make, players make off the field. But still, you know, you're not going to market yourself better than New York. But, yeah, you never know. I mean, we never imagined that A-Rod was going to go to the Texas Rangers, you know, back in, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. If he's going to get 200 ish million, how much money do you have to make off the field? <laughs> right? <laughs> Good point. I mean, yeah, right. You know, you're right. I mean, uh, that's kind of an ego and a pride thing to be in all the commercials and stuff like yeah. that. I'm not sure what the top guy ever made. Maybe Jeter back in the day at maybe about $10 million. But it's not like a LeBron James make over $30 million or a Tiger Woods you know, make over $100 million. Yeah. Uh, all right. Obviously, last week, the Hall of Fame ballot uh, came out. Some new names on the list, some old names as well. Who do you think is going to uh, get into Cooperstown? Uh, who do you think is going to be left out? I think the only slam dunk is Greg Maddox. And I don't know why Maddox wouldn't you know, eclipse Tom Seaver and go over that 98% threshold, threshold pitching the steroid era. You know, again, 354 wins and a, uh, you know, four Cy Young Awards that never been linked to steroids themselves. Uh, uh, you talk to Hall of Fame people, other people, they're a little, they're a little worried they'll, you know, just be Maddox by himself. Uh, I still think, you know, Tom Glavin gets in and Frank Thomas, but what hurts Tom Glavin is what people remind me is that no number two starter has ever made a Hall of Fame his first ballot. You know, you don't think of Clavin as the number two starter, you know, win 305 games, but he was the number two with Atlanta and, and with the Mets, uh, you know, when he pitched. And Frank Thomas, I think, is just going to be hurt being a slugger in the steroid era, even though he was a huge advocate against a, uh, uh, again, for reporters to try to find out who was on, on the juice and who wasn't. Yeah, he was way out in front of that whole thing. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about guys who are still hanging around. You know, you got Jack Morris. You look at last year. Uh, uh, Piazza made a pretty good move. Um, Biggio was Biggio's pretty close. right yeah. there. Uh, any of those guys get in? I think Biggio has a chance. I still think he's going to have to wait maybe another year or so just because the Hall of Fame ballot is so crowded. Uh, I think Piazza, just because of suspicions with him, just like Bagwell, it's going to take it's going to take a while, and uh, and Jack Morris, I'm afraid time's just going to run out. I think Morris gets in eventually in the Veterans Committee, but I think he's going to have a hard time getting in now. I'm a Morris fan. I vote for him every year. I don't think he's going to make it though. Bob, as as a voter and a guy who's immersed in baseball like yourself, do you think that what we went through last year with no one getting in, the interest for the Hall of Fame has dropped off? The fans don't care anymore. No, I don't believe that. I mean, it was sad last year. I mean, the crowd was very small. There were only about half the Hall of Famers that showed up themselves. But I think it's still huge. I, I would love to see Maddox and Glavin, uh, you know, going in together, it, it, uh, along with Bobby Cox. It's a shame that John Sherholz wasn't on that ballot because it would have been real cool to see all four of them going at once. But this could be a brave celebration, uh, you know, next July. 
That'd be, that'd be awesome for Braves fans, for sure. Uh, so we've talked about free agents. We've talked about the Hall of Fame. Let's talk about some trade candidates, and one in particular, Brandon Phillips. We've heard his name get thrown out a lot. Things don't seem to be going all that well between he and the Cincinnati Reds. Where might he end up? Yeah, I think he's definitely gone. I, mean, I think Harold will return to second base quicker than Brandon Phillips will for the Reds. <laughs> I just don't <laughs> see him coming back. Wow. And, uh yeah, just just too much a uh, animosity between him and the front office and, and ownership. Uh, the one thing that makes a lot of sense is Seattle Mariners. They want Robinson Cano. I cannot believe that Cano will go to Seattle, and he's a perfect guy. Uh, you see, he's such a gamer. Uh, he wants to be, you know, a key guy in that lineup. I think he's a great fit for a number of teams. So, Bob, you know, this time of year, we're headed down to the winter meetings in Orlando. Are there anything outside of maybe Brandon Phillips being moved, which is a surprise to me? What might we see uh, that might be a shocker that's kind of on the perimeter? Well, when you look at a team that just made the big move is the Texas Rangers. You know, they get Prince Fielder. I don't think they're done by any means. I think mm -hmm. they're going to uh, delve into the Cano sweepstakes and see what's out there. If not, you know, they got Jerickson Profar. I think they'll be willing to move him in the right deal. And the right deal, you know, could be, you know, grabbing a, uh, Brandon Phillips. Not that they would trade him for Brandon Phillips straight up by any means, but they can move him in a separate deal to go get a power-hitting outfielder and then also trade for Phillips at the same time and really bolster that lineup. It's going to be interesting. A week from now, we'll be at the winter meetings, yeah. wheeling and dealing. You, Ken Rosenthal, you guys won't be sleeping. It'll be fantastic. It's going to be great. You'll be over at the pool. It'll be great. <laughs> Working on my tan. <laughs> Hanging out. Bob Nightingale, Hi, Bob. we appreciate, appreciate the time. You, we'll talk to you again soon. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. All right. All right.